hello Aurora HDR fans, or maybe you're just HDR curious. Um, I'm gonna do some demos here. I'm gonna work on two different photos and uh, kind of show you how fun and easy it is. Uh, by the way, my name is Trey Ratcliffe. I finally got a new mic. I haven't kind of liked it before, uh, but I think this one actually works better. And it doesn't cut out halfway through. It's big and dark colored. Um, okay, let's get into it. So. The two photos I'm going to do today are a little different. One is going to be from uh, three brackets, actually from a drone, of all things. And the second one is going to be a single raw photo. I would say that's at least 60 or 70% of the photos I do now using Aurora HDR is from a single raw photo. Okay. All right, let's get into it. So I'm going to work on these three photos. Um, this is from Key Biscayne. There's a famous lighthouse down that away. And you can see that little mark down on the beach. That's me. Uh, it's not a piece of seaweed. I, I look like seaweed, really, from not that far of a distance. But I do kind of match in there. So we have one, two, and three. Okay, so artistically, I was trying to get the sunset right behind the lighthouse because I thought that would be kind of cool. And I thought it would turn out well later in HDR. So these three. Okay. So I am going to grab all three of these. These have to be JPEGs, although I could draw in, or I could drag in uh, raw files if I wanted to. Drop them right in here. And I will say, oh, this is my previous one I was working on. It's from a golf course. That was from a single raw file, actually, from a drone. Create HDR. So you might be wondering, uh, why am I using JPEGs and not raws? Well, I don't really see that much of a difference. I do think dragging in three RAWs is probably a little bit better, but I have a pretty good eye, and I can't really see the difference. And also, I'm all about um, efficiency to quality ratio, right? Um, I don't go to the mat with every single one of my photos. Some are just studies, and uh, the speed factor is amazing here. Okay, here we are. We've already got a little bit of a, of a change here. You can see the before and after. Let me pull in this, this thing, right? So you see it has that nice little HDR look already, and it's not overdone. I don't think anyone could complain it's overdone. It just really brings out that dynamic light that's really there, okay? And you can make a strong argument that you're done, okay? You could just export it, save it, um, share it, do whatever you want to with it, and you're done. I'm going to do a little bit more to enhance it. Um, just for fun and show you some of the controls here. Okay, often what I'll do is I just do two controls to begin with, okay? HDR enhance, okay, which brings up the HDRness of it. You see, you can really see it in the clouds, a little bit in the water. Um, usually as soon as you get over 50%, it gets a little halo-y, uh, but it still looks okay, I think. It still looks all right. Uh, and then Smart Tone is the second major control that I use here, okay? So Smart Tone is going to take all the dark areas and pull them up, okay? You don't want to make them too bright because then it feels really HDR-ish, right? I want to still keep some kind of inkiness in there, a little bit of darkness. You want to give the hint that it's green, you know, that they're not like black trees. Just giving the hint that they're green, when people look at it, they'll go like, oh, okay, those are green trees, or they're mangroves, or palm trees, or whatever, right? Okay, so it's already looking better, okay? So again, if we do this little slider, so you see it's like before, but now it's more intense. Once again, you can stop here, export it, say, call it a day, and uh, enjoy your photo, okay? I'm gonna do a little bit more. Um, this time, usually when I do these kind of demos, I start getting to layers. Because you can do different things on different layers, like if you want part of the sky to glow, or you want this part to be really HDR-ish, or if you want to do some color contrast, or vignetting, or polarization, all the things you can do in this tool. Um, you may want to do it just a part of the photo. Um, there's so many options down here. Uh, HDR denoise, sometimes what I'll do is I'll make a layer um, and denoise just the sky. Because sometimes if you get the HDR a little too high, it gets a little noisy up there, this counterbalances that. Uh, polarizing filter, HDR boost glow, top and bottom tuning, all super handy things. In fact, let's go ahead and do some top and bottom tuning here, as long as we're here. Um, let's take the exposure up a little bit, okay? Generally, 
Um, this is something that kind of gives away a bad HDR photo, is if the sky and the ground are the same levels of brightness, okay? If the sun is up, which it barely is here, the sky should be noticeably brighter than the ground, okay? So this is a way you can, you can set that up. Okay, and then if you're, this is now an artistic choice, right? You can amp up the vibrance a little bit, make it a little bit... It's bringing a lot of blue and oranges and purples, which I kind of like. I like how there's a bit of a conversation, a transition from the right side to the left side, from cool to warm. Um, and I can do the overall warmth or coolness of the sky here. Okay, I think I'll move it a little bit more into the cool zone. Okay. Um, yeah, all these options. You have the full HSL. All of your favorite tools from Lightroom are in here. Even better, unlike Lightroom, this has layers. So you can do different things at different spots. Okay, but last, let me show you my little image radiance flavor. Okay, so I'm going to pull this up here. You can see how the more I pull it up, it gets a little bit more glowy. Okay, so I'm going to pull that up because I like that glow. And I'm going to pull up the shadows a little bit to bring back those trees. There we go. I like it. Okay. I could do more, but I'll just stop it right here, okay, because I don't want to overwhelm. So now you can see it is quite a different photo. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? And is, isn't it amazing what you can do with drones nowadays? Uh, we've actually been testing the, uh, uh, the Mavic versus the Phantom, and uh, I'm not sure which one's better. We, I need more testing time. But, uh, but yeah, there you go. I'll put it right in the middle of the lighthouse so you can see the difference. Okay, let's work on the next the next photo. Let me jump back over here into Lightroom. This is going to be a single raw photo. And it's this one, okay? Kind of blah, right? Uh, this is on Grand Cayman Island. Or as they say, they're Cayman. So I'm going to go here and drop it into Aurora. Um, there's lots of ways to get it into Aurora. Um, here I'm going to check tone mapping, because that's what I want. And I'll say create HDR. And here we are. Let's look at a little before and after. Uh, now, if I did not check tone mapping, the before and after would look exactly the same. Uh, but almost all the time when I bring in a single raw, I do turn on the tone mapping. Okay, So that's that. Now you can see my horizon is off. I have no one to blame but myself on this one. So I'm going to go click on the cropping tool up here. And then I'll go up and grab the corner thing, give it a little spin. Use the little grid lines to make sure it looks good. See this little leaf sticking in over here? I don't like it. Got to go, so I'm just going to crop in a little bit. Yeah, looks good. Oh, I like to turn on a phi, too. Um, see this little boat right there on the horizon? I'm going to put that right on the phi line. Oh, yeah. Also, sometimes I find I hate to crop my photos for different mediums, but sometimes, um, sometimes I do, right? So, like, the narrower you make, you make them, the better they look on people's phones, right, on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you know, so much of sharing and creating art is not just the creation of it, but it's the sharing of it. I think that's, that's part of it, because if you have a creation and you don't share it with anyone, um, it seems a little incomplete. And you don't share it in an egoistic way, like, look at how amazing I am. You share it like a little kid, just for the joy of sharing and to kind of spread this idea of creativity to other people. A lot of my, most of my photos I don't crop for um, Instagram, but some I do. Okay, okay anyway, uh, let's bring some more magic to this. Okay, just like I said last time, there's two things that I do. I use HDR Enhance and I use Smart Tone. So I'll pull up the HDR Enhance. Okay, you see that makes it a little bit more chunky, especially up in the clouds. Now, there are times when you want to have chunky clouds and not chunky clouds. If you don't have like an exposed sun and a lot of bright um, blue sky, you can have your, your clouds be a bit more moody. Okay. Uh, and then a little bit of smart tone to bring up the dark spots. Okay, looking good. Okay, next, what shall we do next? Um, I do see a little bit of noise in the sky, so I'll go ahead and make a layer here, a new adjustment layer. And I'll go here to the uh, HDR denoise area, and I'll increase the amount until I don't see any more. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll increase the smooth a little bit. 
And this HDR denoise is very powerful, right? Watch what happens if I amp them all up. See, look how smooth the sky gets, right? And smooth the water becomes. This is, a, again, a creative decision for you. Maybe you want the water to be really smooth and silky like that. Um, this tool gives you so many artistic decisions. That's just an example. You can see like before, you can turn on this, this little eye to see it before and after of that one tool. Okay. So anyway, that's way too much. Let's just tap on the brakes there. Pull down the boost. Okay, it's looking good. Um, okay, now that I've adjusted the denoise to a good level, I'm going to click the brush brush. Okay, and it starts out kind of small. You click the right bracket to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and now I'm brushing through that smooth sky. And you can't really see what I'm doing here, so let me turn on the mask. Okay, so everywhere I'm brushing, we're going to have zero noise. Absolute zero noise. All right, cool. Um, now let's uh, brighten up the ocean a little bit, okay? It looks nice, it looks moody, but I want it to feel a little bit brighter, maybe. So I hit plus new adjustment layer. And let's go to top and bottom lighting. Where we used that last time. I click on bottom. I'll increase the exposure a little bit. Okay. I will maybe decrease the contrast so it's not so chunky. It's a little smoother. I'm gonna warm it up. I'm sorry, cool yeah, cool it off a little bit. Over to the left, it gets cooler. Over here, it gets a bit warmer. I'm just going to cool it off just a little bit. There we go. Maybe brighten it up even a little bit more. And let's adjust our center point. Okay, if I hit set orientation, see it's down a little bit. Let's just move it up to the horizon. There we go. Cool. Um, you can stop again at any one of these steps. And let's see what we've done already for before and after. Um, go down this one. Done, and then click on this one. So you can see it's already uh, a much just brighter and more vibrant photo. Uh, kind of like it was when it was there. You know, your eyes are just much more sensitive than the, than the camera. Okay, and finally, let's just add a little bit of glow, a little bit of soul glow. So I'll make another uh, adjustment here. And go down here to image uh, radiance. Pull that up. And then pull up the vividness. Whoa, that's a little much. Okay, we're gonna, don't worry, we're going to use a brush. Okay, we're not going to make it look that ridiculous. Okay, so I'm going to click a brush here. And this time, instead of brushing at 100%, uh, I'm going to drop down the opacity to like 47 or something. I'm going to make the brush smaller. And I'm just going to peek around these little clouds, okay? Some little clicks down here on the horizon. Everywhere I'm clicking, there's going to be a little bit more glow here. You can't see what I'm doing, so let me turn this off. Okay. So I know that everywhere that I click here is going to be a little bit more colorful, a little more full of surprises. Um, I think it's important, actually, for your photo to be a little inconsistent. Okay, and have little surprises here or there. You know, because as people's eyes move around your photo, you want them to be surprised. Like, oh, I didn't expect, you know, that to glow right there. It's okay to be a little inconsistent. It's not just okay, I think it's preferable. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, so let's look at the sky before and, uh, before and after this one. So uh, let me turn this one off, on. It's got some more glow. In fact, I think I can do even more. Let's turn up that glow. Let's take it up to 11. Amp it up there. Get even brighter, get more vivid. Pull up the shadows. Yeah. I said, actually, that's too much. I was looking for those blue parts of the sky. Okay, now let's go down to the water down here, the, the base of it, and make this glow. Okay, as I paint down here, getting a bit more glowy. All right, looking good. So before and after, before and after, looking good. Looking good, all right. Well, I don't want to overcook it too much. Um, it's already you know, pretty well done. <laughs> It depends on, you know, your own style. Maybe you want it rare, medium rare, well done. Um, but yeah, I like it. It's pretty good. Quite an enhancement. Quite an enhancement. Uh, fun, fun and easy. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed those little uh, demos. 
Um, if you've been using uh, Aurora HDR for a while, I, re I really encourage you to play with some of these new tools that you may not have used before. Um, try not to get in a rut of using the same tools over and over and over again. Like you can do some really cool cross-processing tricks with tone curve, red, green, and blue. Um, HSL, you can do very artsy things and it can really change the look and feel of your photo. Same with color tuning. This kind of split toning cross-processing area can give your photo a bit of a film look while you're doing HDR stuff. So yeah, just have a ball. Uh, don't be scared of the tool. Uh, just because there's a lot of stuff in there doesn't mean it's scary. And uh, remember, if you watched all this and you're like, wow, Ratcliffe, that is way too overwhelming. You can always turn on this one right here and see all the different presets along the bottom. And just click a preset and you're good to go. All right. Uh, well, I love you guys. I hope you uh, are feeling creative today. If you're feeling driven to create something interesting. And I will see you next time. Bye.